All right, here's a quick tutorial for the Texas Instruments CD4516 four-digit binary up-down counter. So I'm going to try to make this as quick as possible. We'll do the pinouts one at a time, and I guess we'll hook them up as we're going. Uh, pin 1 is preset enable. Since it's a four-digit counter, it has this really cool function where you can sort of set the preset, but we don't want to deal with the preset, so we're going to uh, just jump that to ground to keep that off. The second one is output number four. The second pin is output number four. We're going to leave that. Pin three is preset number four. And since we're not using presets, again, we're going to jump that to ground. So here's one, two, three. Jump that over to ground as well. Try to make this as easy as possible for you guys. So I've got so far pin one and three jumped to ground. We're just dealing with the presets. So then we're looking next is pin four, which is... Uh, preset 1 actually, so that will also jump that to ground too. So this is pin 4, jumping that to ground because we're not using these presets. Maybe in another tutorial I'll show you how you can do that. So let's see. The next one is the carry in, and carry in allows you to do sort of like ripple outputs, and we don't want to do that because we want it to be fully synchronized if we're using multiple chips. So we'll also ground that because we don't want to have any sort of ripple output is if you want to sort of cascade the numbers one at a time. Uh, the way that it's set up synchronized that all this all the lights will flip at the same time. Uh, so if you're familiar with how flip flops work, uh, you'll understand that. And then so this next one is output one and we're actually going to use output one and that's pin six. So we're going to go eight, seven, six and we're going to jump that to ground. So that'll be our first output, pin number six. All right. And then let's see here, pin number seven is the carry out, and we'll just leave that completely unplugged because we're not using carry out. Uh, pin number eight, as usual, is the ground, so we'll plug that in, VSS for ground. And that should take care of the first side, pretty simple. Um, pin 16 on the top side, we'll go from the bottom here. So now pin nine is reset, and we'll jump that to ground. If I can get this in here, oh, there we go. Jump to reset the ground. Put that down. <clears throat> Next up is the up down direction counter. If it sees a positive current, it'll go up. If it sees a negative counter, it'll count down from oh, from the top from max. And I don't think this has a min max output, so we're not really going to deal with that. Probably shouldn't be bending these wires over each other, huh? I think I'll just leave these ones straight up for now. Uh, let's see. Next one. Pin 11 is output 2, so that's the other output that we're going to use. And we'll say, okay, we'll jump that to ground, just like that. Okay. So let's see, what's next? Oh, pin 12, let's see, we got 9, 10, 11. Pin 12 is preset number 3. We'll also jump that to ground because we don't need that. Again, not dealing with these presets, we just want it to count from 0, right? So again, on top of that is another preset. Looks like I'm out of black wires here for grounding, but start with white ones. This is preset four or no, preset three, I think. So we're also going to jump that to ground. So you can actually see these things. If you don't understand how they work, they're actually pretty simple if you just want to count. We're just going to use, I guess, two digits right here for now, one and two. Uh, next is Q3. That's an output. We'll leave that, we'll leave that open. Um, pin 15 is the clock. And the clock will actually put a nice long lead on here like this. So these chips run at about, you know, in between 5 and 6 volts. And I'm running it. I'm just running it with this little battery pack adapter here. So I don't have to deal with like a whole bunch of resistance or anything, especially for this one. So then you see pin 16 up there is power. So let's power it up and see if I did anything wrong here. So I'm powering up my right rails here. If I can get this thing to plug in, there we go. Powering up the right rails. Now I gotta jump across to the left rail because I got a whole bunch of stuff grounded over here, right? And a lot of thing a lot of times, like what I had a problem with, because I'm not an engineer, I'm just a music teacher, so <laughs> figuring a lot of this stuff out on my own. So let's just see if it works first and then I'll explain what I've figured out so far. Great. So we'll start it off at zero here. Okay. 
So here we go. We've got zero. This is the clock input right here. And what I'm going to do is just jump it back and forth between positive and negative and sort of simulate PWM going high and low and high and low. So when I go high, I've got one. Clear it. There's two. Well, actually, that was three. Let's see if I can get this back. There's one, two, three. Oh, no, let me reset it first here. Oh, you know what I forgot? Can you see what I forgot? I forgot to power the damn ship. <laughs> so, I don't know how that was working. I'm not really quite sure, but let's start over again here. So I had to shut this off. Now I'll reset it. Now I'll start cycling back and forth. Here we've got one. There we go. Two on the other side. 2 plus 1 is 3, position 0, 1, 2, 3, 0, 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, just like that. So this is a four stage, this would be stage 1, stage 2, stage 3, stage 4, just like that. And I'm cycling back and forth again, simulating PWM. So if you plug it in and you're like, you know, going, well, why, isn't, why isn't it counting like this? It's because, remember, we're trying to simulate pulse width modulation like this. So it's actually a pretty easy circuit and I guess I'll take it apart and sort of explain how I'm taking it apart. Actually, I'll show you how easy it is just to add a couple more LEDs first to Q3 and Q4. So let's see, here's Q, I think this is Q3 right here. So I'm going to jump that over to ground. Now remember I turned the circuit off because it, like, it does a self-test when it turns on. Okay, there we go. Plug that into pin 14. And then over on the other side, what pin was that? I think pin 2. Pin 2 is Q4, I think. So, oh boy, this is going to be crazy. See if I can jump this over here. Actually, I could probably just jump this down to one of those other rails, but I just kind of want to show everything the way it's supposed to be. All right, so let's try it now and see if it works here. We've got 1, 2, 3... Four, five, nice, six, makes sense, seven, now eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, pretty decent, right? And then, so now, like, say you wanted to start counting down, you just, let's see if I can get this here, switch the up-down counter to down, giving that a negative charge, right? Now jumping back and forth, you can see I'm jumping back down. All right. Rocking, right? So there you go. The CD4516BE Texas Instruments binary up-down counter. Uh, just a basic explanation. I sure wish this video was on the internet <laughs> when I was trying to figure it out. So thanks.